This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the third lecture on the chapter on depreciation. Uh, and I did say there are two methods you've got to be aware of of calculating the depreciation. In the last lecture, we went through the straight line method. In this lecture, I'll go through reducing balance. or reducing instalment. It means the same thing. And here, you can't sort of really learn a formula, even though I think learning formula is bad anyway. Uh, but let me explain with an example. I think it should become clear fairly quickly. Um, look at example two, if you would. Zils has a year end of 31st December each year. On the 5th of April, he buys a machine for 15,000. And his depreciation policy is to charge 20% reducing balance with a full year's charge in the year of purchase. And again, we're going to show the uh, depreciation charge, the expense, which in the first three accounting periods, uh, and extracts from the statements. All right, now watch me carefully. It's not hard, obviously, but I, I say again, I can't just give you a formula. But just watch. The first year, the depreciation expense well, it says it's 20% reducing balance. We take 20% of the value of the machine. Well, you've only just bought it, it cost 15,000. So the expense will take 20% of 15,000, which is 3,000. Uh, we didn't buy it until 5th of April. I said, if you're pro rata, do it to the nearest month. And so, were it not for one thing, I would have taken 9 twelfths now of 3,000. We'd only had it for nine months. But do note, it says there's a full year's charge in the year of purchase. And so, it'll be a full 3,000 whenever we bought it within that year. And so what will appear in the statements? In the statement of profit or loss, we'll have depreciation expense, 3,000, no problem. In the statement of financial position as a non-current asset, we'll have the machine. Remember, we have to show this breakdown, so the original cost, 15,000. And the total, the accumulated depreciation, 3,000. And so its value is 12. But again, we have to show those workings. So, so far, so good. Uh, but I need to carry on to make it clear how this works. Assuming we've still got the machine, when we come to the second year, uh, the second year, the depreciation expense, well, we take the same percent each year. Here, it tells us it's 20%. But we take 20% of whatever the value now is of the machine. And on our statement of financial position, at the end of the first year, we reduced its value to 12. And so on this approach, in the second year, we'll take 20% of 12,000, which is 2,400. 
Last year, we bought it for 15, we took 20% of 15. This year, because we reduced the value to 12, we take 20% of 12. And so on the statement of profit or loss, depreciation expense is 2,400. In the statement of financial position, the original cost was 15. The total, the accumulated depreciation. Well, last year we'd subtracted three. This year another 2,400, a total of 5,400. So its value now goes down to 9,600. It was 12, another 2,400 brings it down to 9,600. Let's do a third year to make sure. Uh, what's the depreciation expense going to be this year? We keep the same percentage that we told here, 20%, but it's 20% of the new value. And of course, at the end of the second year, the value had gone down to 9,600. 20% of 9,600 is uh, 1920. And so there is the expense in the statement of profit and loss. Uh, statement of financial position. As always, the original cost must appear. Car cost. And the original cost was 15. Less the accumulated depreciation. Well, we've had 5,400 so far. This year, another 1920. So the total is what? 7,320. And so the value on the statement will fall to 7,680. And there we are. So I hope you see what's happening. Uh, I'm not going to do a fourth year, but I'm sure you're happy by now. I hope you're happy by now. That the expense in the fourth year would be 20% of 7,680. So it's the same percent each year, but you're taking uh, the percent of a lower value uh, as the value keeps uh, falling. So there we are, that's reducing balance. Now a few little things to say before we uh, call this one a day. Uh, firstly, um, although it's not really your problem for the exam, reducing balance does tend to be uh, a bit more popular because some people say it's a bit more realistic in that although we're never trying to show a true value of the asset, um, I think it is the case that for most assets, think about a car, for example. Uh, a car does fall in value, and it tends to fall a lot more in the first year than it does in later years. And that's what's happening here. It falls a lot in the first year, it falls by 2.4. Next year, only 19.20. No, I've lost it, sorry. First year was 3,000. Second year, only 2.4. Third year only 1920. Uh, so um, some people regard it as being more realistic and prefer it. Uh, but there's no rule. The statement, of, sorry, the, the accounting standard, the rules for accountants say you can do it whichever way you like. It's your choice. But they do say, firstly, you must state what method you're using. There has to be a little note with the accounts. And secondly, you should do it the same way every year. You can't say, oh, this year I'll do a straight line, next year I'll do it. It has to be the same way every year. 
and you have to do all similar assets the same way. So, you know, you can't just do one machine reducing balance and another machine straight line. Either you do all your machines reducing balance or you do all your machines straight line. <coughs> However, there are the rules. You know, surely you, you can practice them. Uh, one last thing to be careful of. It's when you're hurrying in an exam, you might miss it. Is suppose I told you this. Suppose a car cost oh, what shall I say? Twenty thousand. It's got an expected life of ten years. And there's no scrap value. And in fact, if you're not told, you assume there's no scrap value anyway. And suppose it's straight line depreciation. What would be the expense each year? Well, if there's no scrap value, the depreciation expense each year, 20,000 minus zero over 10 years, is 2,000 per year. And it's, it's very common to have no scrap value. I mean, how on earth in real life can you estimate what it'll be worth in five years, 10 years? Uh, more often than not, we assume it's worth nothing. Well, that's fine. There's nothing new there. We went through straight line in the last lecture. However, they can to give it you in another way. Instead of saying it's got a life of 10 years, they can say this. The car cost 20,000. We're using straight line depreciation. Sorry. We're using 10% straight line depreciation. Now if they ever tell you that, that it's straight line depreciation, then it's another way of what we had before, the depreciation expense. It's 10% of cost each year, which is 2,000. They can give it you either way. They can either say it's straight line, there's a life of 10 years, 2,000 a year, or they could give you 10% straight line, 2,000 a year. Or for instance, if its life was five years, if I gave you straight line over five years, the expense would be 4,000 a year. Alternatively, I, the question could say it costs 20,000 and it's 20% 20, 20 straight line. Well, 20% 20 of 20% uh, 20 of 20,000, again, is 4,000. Now, that's not hard, and I hope that's clear there. You know, 5% straight line would be the same as life of 20 years. But be careful. It's a way they trick you. You see, if it's 10% reducing balance, then we've got all this business to do. If it's 10% straight line, then it's an equal amount each year. It's simply 10% of the original cost. All right, so there are the two methods. Most of any questions you get will be on the calculation of depreciation. But as always, I've got to show you the, de the double entry. Uh, but the double entry is, in fact, very easy indeed. Uh, and it's the same double entry, however we're calculating the depreciation. We calculate it, but once we've calculated it, the double entry is always the same. So uh, that is easy, but to be safe, I will show you. I'll show you that in the next, the next lecture.